Hey, what is up guys? How are we doing? And welcome back to Is Threadripper Worth It? A video I've been putting together over the last few days and to be honest, I'm really excited to share the results with you. Because for someone like myself that does do a lot of 4K video editing, gaming and photo editing, having a really fast computer does make a big difference. But realistically, a thousand pound CPU with 16 cores, it sounds fantastic on paper, but is it actually going to help me? And is it gonna help you if you are looking at picking one up for yourself? This is what I wanted to explore, and I guess these are my findings. Now, my test PC was of course the Threadripper build that I put together last week. You can find the video over there in the top right hand corner, but essentially we've got a Vega 64 liquid cord paired with 32 gigabytes of RAM, and of course the 1950X 16 core Threadripper chip. And to kick us off, we'll look at some synthetic benchmarks. And if you do pick up one of these chips, I highly recommend you open the Cinebench benchmark, hit the run button because the score you get is gonna be close to 3000. It runs so quickly. And if you've ever used it on a significantly slower chip, it's just amazing to see it run that quickly. Moving over to some gaming benchmarks though, synthetically, we didn't really see anything that was particularly impressive, to be honest with you. The CPU score was hovering around about the 10,000 mark, just below, which is something you'd expect from an overclocked Ryzen processor as well. So those 16 cores aren't really being utilized here, but we'll get onto proper gaming performance a little bit later. The thing I was really keen to do was actually see how this would affect me on a day-to-day -day basis. So I installed and opened up DaVinci Resolve, which is my video editor of choice. And I use this to not only edit, but color correct my videos. It's really powerful. Obviously for these YouTube videos, I don't really uh, use it to its full potential. But the point of all of this is that this is quite demanding and the Threadripper chip did blitz through it. I mean, this is 4K, this isn't ProRes. Switching to ProRes would help me here. But again, I didn't actually see that much difference between my normal Ryzen 1700 chip in terms of how it felt. It still stuttered from time to time, but you know, no real problems whatsoever. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm getting the most out of it here, but it's definitely uh, doing its job. It's maybe just not the most optimized. When we click on the render button, this is of course where we would expect to see the biggest gains and we'd just expect to see it completely run away. But for some strange reason, I have no idea why, whether it's memory, software, GPU, CPU, but as soon as I hit the render button, nothing happens. And I've tried uninstalling the application, I've tried uh, swapping out the hardware acceleration to something else. Um, I've pretty much tried everything and I'm still waiting to hear back from AMD. So I had to open up Premiere instead and do some tests and five minutes of 4k video did render out in just slower than real time in just over six minutes Which is still very impressive It's just a shame I couldn't obviously do my testing in the video editor that I use on a day-to-day -day basis Photo editing on the other hand though I use Adobe Lightroom having a very fast CPU is definitely going to help you here But again, I'm not entirely convinced that I'm seeing a massive change from a Ryzen 1700 compared to the 16 cores that we've got here. Having said that though, the export times were very quick indeed, with 74 raw files from my 7D Mark II being exported in just over two minutes, which is very impressive indeed. The other thing that I use my computer for then is of course gaming. And a lot of people will say straight away, this isn't a gaming CPU, um, people aren't gonna use it for this, why are you testing it? Well, because people will be using this for gaming. Nobody buys this chip for gaming. And if you're thinking of doing that, then you will be losing frames a second if you're playing at 1080p. I'll start to overlay the benchmarks now. So if you want a gaming CPU, the absolute best performance possible, highest frame rate, then something like a 7700K is still gonna be your best bet. But I don't think that anyone buys this chip really is gonna be concerned because chances are, your monitor is probably less than 100 hertz, so you wouldn't really see any difference anyway because you're going to have V-Sync on, or even if you don't, those frames aren't gonna be displayed to you. And there is also a game mode that you can enable that actually essentially turns this into a Ryzen 1800X by disabling eight of the cores, and then you can actually 
um, overclock it a little bit further and it changes some of the memory settings as well which uh, should net you a few extra frames a second but I dare say most people will probably be happy with the performance of the games anyway in its default state. So that's all of the performance numbers that you need to know, at least uh, that would affect me on a day-to-day -day basis. But what about overclocking? Because this is an overclockable chip. Can you actually get more for your money? And the answer is yes, because I was thinking that thermals was gonna hold this back, like we saw on the i9 from uh, Intel's 10-core chip, but this wasn't really a concern. In fact, I was almost doubting the temperature numbers because they were a lot lower than I thought they were going to be. And even overclocked, I wasn't hitting anything over 77 degrees, which I think is very impressive. And this was the number taken from the Ryzen Master application. And I verified with both MSI and AMD that this was the correct figure to take because I really didn't expect it to be this low. So I managed to overclock it to four gigahertz with 1.3 three, seven, five volts, a very precise number. And we did see performance increases and performance gains. In gaming 1080p, we did see a slight increase, but to be honest, I was almost expecting more here. And in both Premiere and Lightroom, we saw gains as well with render times and export times that were a fair bit lower. So if you do wanna get more out of your chip without really causing too much of an issue in the thermal department, then this can be done, which actually uh, I think is quite impressive. But sort of bringing it all back round to the is it worth it factor, I think it's actually a really simple conclusion on this one. And that's when you're doing your shopping, again, if you've got a very large budget to spend and you're thinking, you know what, I could actually get a thread ripper here. The way to look at it is it's like a English motorway. Um, your car can go faster than 70 miles an hour, but UK law says we can't. So if your application is enabling you to use all the performance you've got here, you're going to see very big gains indeed. But otherwise you're essentially just buying something that can't really be tapped into and it may not be the best investment, especially when the Ryzen processors that can be um, found for really good prices, especially the 1700 that I use as my personal chip, it's not necessarily gonna be worth going um, a lot further and spending a lot more money unless you can use that power. But I'm definitely keen to follow this one up once DaVinci Resolve um, that problem has been solved at least. So do stay tuned for that. Let me know what you thought of this video and whether the findings were interesting for you. Have you picked up a Threadripper chip, Ryzen, or are you still team Intel? Let me know down in the comment section below. Like this video if you liked it, subscribe for more, and as I say, go and check out the build video if you wanna see this in all its glory. A massive thank you once again, and I'll see you next time.